research is often fueled by curiosity that leads to extraordinary and meaningful discoveries. For instance, in 2003, Italian researchers published a scientific article claim that eating pizza can reduce the risk of certain cancers. Hmm, I know what you're thinking. Can really the greasy, cheesy, salty pizza link to fighting cancers? Is there any causal relationship between my favorite meat lovers, dip dish, and my healthy living? You see, correlational research seeks to discover what two variables are associated or related in some way. Now, one of the main reasons that we want to know about correlation is for prediction that if two variables are correlated, then that means knowing one allows us to take an educated guess about what the other is likely to be. and my team and I explore correlation and how two variable, yes, even peace and health are related. But before we delve deeper into it, with much pride and honor, let me introduce to you our dynamic team. So you learn the advantages and limits of correlational design, how to distinguish between correlational design and correlation as a statistic, how to compute and interpret the statistics assessing correlations between different types of variables, and how to use a relationship to predict scores of one of the variables in the relationship. Correlation derives from a Latin word core means together, and relatio means relation. And now let's move on to variable. So what is exactly variable is? A variable is a factor in a research study that has two or more possible values. For example, we people, everyone has characteristics, but different people has different value. For example, one, has an age, but different people have different age. So, parang kayo din ng jowa mo. Pare-pareho naman kayo nagmamahal, pero yung jowa mo, may mas mahal ng iba. Correlational design is a type of study that tests the hypothesis that variables are related. It is a design with two or more predictions that are not manipulated in the study. Now, let's go back to a sumptuous pizza. Is it true? Can eating pizza really cut the risk of cancer? Is there a causal relationship between the my favorite meat lovers, dip dish, and healthy living? Well, not exactly, but other scientists and even authors of the study caution readers quickly make a causal relationship. It turns out that a Mediterranean diet is more likely the cause of finding cancer and healthy living. A diet that is rich in olive oil, fish, grains, fruit, and yes, tomatoes, one of the main ingredients on a pizza. It is common to think that when two things related to one another or appear linked like money and happiness, violent video games and aggressive behavior, eating breakfast and success in school, that one caused the other, but does it necessarily mean a cause? Correlation does not imply causation. I repeat, correlation does not imply causation. And so, if we want to know about cause, then we're going to have to have an experiment. 
Oftentimes, two variables appear to be linked to each other, but in actuality, there is another unknown or third variable that is the real source of the link. And guess what it's called? It's a third variable problem. Hmm. Wakala mo, kasalanan mo kung bakit kayo nag-aaway, pero hindi pala kasi merong third party. Kaya, girl, ha, kailangan marami kang bawang sa bahay mo para lubayan ng mga swangang jowa mo. And yes, it's correlation. More bawang you put inside your house, the lesser a swang will get inside your house or will get to jowa. Mm. But this finding reminds us that we must not jump into conclusion when establishing links between variables. Because in correlation, there's always much more to it than meets the eye. So now, let's learn more with Miss Pearl. Why do researchers use correlational designs when it only examines relationships between variables? I will be discussing some reasons why correlational designs are appropriate and may even be the best or only type of research design to employ. Correlational designs may be used when it is unethical to manipulate variables in your research. Suppose you are studying the relationship between overspeeding and cell phone use while driving. It will be unethical to use an experimental design where we require participants to use their phone while driving to see its impact on speeding. We would not want to encourage such unsafe driving behavior. Instead, we could ask participants how frequently they use their phone while driving and how many speeding tickets they have been issued over the past six months and use correlational statistics to analyze the relationship between overspeeding and cell phone use while driving. There are some variables that we cannot manipulate or control, such as personality, weather, natural disasters, or outcome of a war. Since many researches involve uncontrollable variables, correlational designs provide us with a legitimate method examine the relationship of these variables with other variables. Correlational design can also be employed as pilot study to see whether an experiment should be conducted. Sometimes, a researcher may want to be more confident in his hypothesis before conducting an experiment. As such, he may initially use a correlational study to obtain some empirical evidence that his idea has some merit. The result of this correlational study can then assist the researcher in designing an experimental study that manipulates one of the variables in order to see its impact on the second variable. Correlations are not always the main purpose of a study. It can be a component of a descriptive study analyzing the relationship between variables collected during observation, interview, and questionnaire or of an experimental study that examines a causal relationship. Thus, as long as a research study involves examination of relationship between variables, it is appropriate to supplement such study with correlational designs. Since researches involving correlational studies only measure behavior as they naturally occur, thus do not control the situation or variables. Findings are more easily generalized to everyday life and thus may have greater external validity than findings from experimental studies in an artificial laboratory environment. From the previous example, although we could ethically study the relationship between cell phone use and driving speed by using a simulation in the laboratory, we may not be confident that this will represent the reality of driving on roads or the reality of making or answering a call on the spur of the moment. Collecting data about the actual cell phone use and speeding tickets is more feasible study and provides data that is more generalized to the reality of daily driving experience. Finally, correlation is the statistic that we use to assess reliability and validity. These were thoroughly discussed in the previous chapters. Now, while there are many advantages in using correlational designs, 
we must also understand that there is a limitation in using them. In correlational designs, we can only infer that two variables are positively or negatively related, but not the cause and effect of each other. To remind ourselves of this, we can sing this off-key song from Patricia Jenkinson, whom I have watched recently in YouTube for this topic. Association is not causation, it's often known as correlation. The next presenter will discuss how to distinguish between correlational design and correlation as a statistic. Hi everyone, I'm Amy Ferrer and I will be discussing how to make a powerful correlational design and an overview of correlation as a statistic. So let's start with correlational design first. In correlational design, we increase the power of the study that we are conducting. And how do we do that? First, we must remember that the measurement we use is reliable for it to be valid. Kasi may hirapan tayo makita ang relationship between two variables if the measurement of one or both of the variables is unreliable or inconsistent. Second, it is also important for a correlational study to have external validity. And that is determined by sampling procedures. The researchers can examine the correlation using different groups as a way to establish the external validity of the relationship. And third, the two measures must show variability in their scores. If one or both of the variables show restricted range of scores, may hirapan tayo makita kung paano ba ang movement ng relationship ng scores together. So restricted range can be created when either the ceiling effect or the floor effect occurs. So ano nga ba ang ceiling effect? Basically, it is the restriction of the upper limit of the measure so that the higher levels of the measure are not assessed accurately. So, ang perfect example dito ay kung um, makakapag, na, nakapagbigay ang isang teacher ng madaling exam, tapos maraming naka-perfect or maraming nakakuha ng mataas na grade. Dahil dito, may hirapan ang teacher to rank the scores of the students in any type of order. Tapos hindi pa niya madidistinguish kung sino yung mga estudyante na makakapag-perform ng better sa harder exam. So, yun ang ceiling effect. Now, let's move on to the opposite of the ceiling effect, which is the floor or the basement effect. So, that is when you restrict the lower limit of the measure so that the lower scores are not assessed accurately. So, an example of this is when researchers want to understand the distribution of the household income. So, gumawa sila ng questionnaire to give to each household. And since they want to prevent a non-biased response, they decided to ask the household which bracket they fall in. And they made the lowest bracket na 30,000 pesos or less. And this will result in not getting the accurate idea of the distribution of household income because even if the household earns far less than 30,000 pesos, let's say na 15,000 pesos, um, they will be grouped to 30,000 pesos or less pa din. So yun yung floor basement effect and we are done with the correlational designs. Now, let's move on to correlation as a statistic. Now, there are some correlational designs that are analyzed with correlational statistics. And there are correlational designs that can be analyzed by different statistics. So, in correlational statistics, we will be using the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient or most commonly known as Pearson's R. <laughs> Pearson's R is a statistical test for us to determine if a linear relationship exists between two variables. Bala yung two variables sa yon ay yung x at yung y. And the persons are will be providing us two informations. Yun ay yung direction at yung strength or magnitude of the relationship. Now, let's talk about the direction of the relationship first. Dalawa lang naman to. Positive correlation at negative correlation. So, in positive correlation, we can simply say, describe this as, as x goes up, the y also goes up. So, for example, nung nag-start yung COVID-19 pandemic, um, we, we were all advised to stay inside our homes. Why? Because the more people outside, the more chances that the, the virus will spread. Or let's put it in a classroom setup, ganon. Um, sabi nila, the longer you study, the higher your grade is. Sana nga, ganon, no? So, 
<laughs> Ayun. So, let's move on to the negative correlation. We can simply say that as X goes up, the Y goes down. And a good example for this would be the law of supply and demand. Wherein, if the supply is high, the demand is low or vice versa. But may inverse relationship sila. Now, let's move on to the strength of the relationship. The value of Pearson's R ranges from positive 1 to negative 1 and their middle will be 0. Now, you have to remember that the closer the R is to the absolute value of 1, the stronger the relationship is. Hindi mo kailangan intindihin ang positive at negative because this will only represent whether it is a positive or negative correlation. Now, I've attached here the guidelines for the approximate strength of a correlation wherein you can see that the that if the R is greater than 0.50, it will be considered already as a strong correlation. And if R is less than or equal to 0.30, it will be considered as moderate. And lastly, if the R is less than 0.20, it will be considered as weak. Now, perfect correlation is 1. Yet, why don't we see that in the general guidelines that 1 is the perfect correlation? That is simply because we are dealing with social sciences. And in social sciences, there are many variables. That's why perfect correlation does not exist. So to further discuss about the Pearson's R, I'm passing the presentation to the next presenter. Thank you. I, I think we should call it a night. Mrs. Cesaro, no. Papunta pa lang tayo sa exciting part. Shut up. Hi guys, our next step is all about the person or how to compute person R. First, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you cannot, you are right. Sometimes kasi we are thinking na hindi natin kaya isang bagay. That's why I encourage all of you to try this one and give your chance to learn. First, we need to identify the hypothesis. So, null hypothesis is equal to the verbal ability and willingness it will not be relate, related. And Alternative hypothesis is equal to verbal ability will be negatively related to willingness to cheat. So from the previous chapter, we discussed about the mean, standard deviation, and the C-score. So here in persons R, we need those formulas to get the persons R. So we isa-isain natin siya. First, we need to identify the mean from number 1 to 20 or sample number 1 to 20. Verbal ability is the value of X and willingness to cheat is the value of Y. So, first is to get the total of X, 1,307. Next is to get the total of Y, which is 643. So, next step is, pag nakuha na natin siya, let's divide the X or Y to the number of samples, which is 20. So, 1,307 over 20 is equals to 65.35. For Y naman, 643 over 20 to get 32.15 once nakuha na natin siya we need to identify the standard deviation next step is to compute x minus m and y minus m so the verbal ability x which is 25 minus 65.35 which is mean to get negative 40.35 for the value of y naman we need to get 48 minus 32.15 is equals to 15.85 and so on. Ganun lang siya. So, second step is to get the x minus m squared and y minus m squared. So, since we get the x minus m and y minus m, negative 40.35 times negative 40.35 is equals to 1628.1225 and so on. For the value of y minus m squared naman, 15.85 times 15.85 is equals to 251.2225 and so on. So, once we get those values, Next step is to get the sum of x minus m squared and y minus m squared. So, i-add lang natin siya from 1 to 20 to get 8,028.50 and 1,878.55 for the value of y. Next step naman natin is to divide the x minus m squared and y minus m squared to number or n minus 1 or sample n minus 1. So, 8,028.50 over 19 kasi 20 minus 1 is 19 to get 422.5552632. Next is the value of Y is 1878.55 over 19 to get 98.87105263. Once nakuha na natin yun, we need to substitute to the given formula of standard deviation which is the square root of 422.5552632 to get 20.556. 14904. 
And for the value of Y naman, 98.8710563 to get 9.9433 So once nakuha na natin yun, we need to identify the C-score. So X minus M over the standard deviation since yun yung kinumpute natin kanina. So, X minus M, which is negative 40.35, over standard deviation natin, di ba, from, ng X is 20.5561494 to get negative 1.9629. And for the value of Y naman, which is X minus M, 15.85, over 20.5561494 to get 1.5940. So, pag nakuha na natin siya, uh, we need to identify or to get the value of CY or CX and CY. So, paano yun? So, negative 1.9629 times 1.5940 to get CXY. So, mumultiply nang natin yun. Kaya naging negative 3.12.89 and so on. Next step naman is to get the total of CX and CY. So, once nakuha na natin yung CX and CY, i-add lang natin siya to get negative 12.50. Ito na yung sa persons R natin. So, third step natin is to substitute to the given formula. So, ano ba yung given formula? The summation of CX and CY over N minus 1. So, nakuha natin kanina yung negative 12.50 over 19 is equals to negative 0.66. So, yung negative 66 will be interpret by the next reporter. Thank you. What is a point by serial correlation coefficient? It is similar to the Pearson's R, symbolized as R sub PB, which describes the relationship between a dichotomous variable, for example, those answerable only by yes or no, those that are naturally occurring, or those that can be arbitrarily dichotomized. And the continuous variable, for example, intervals or ratio of time, currency, or certain scores. So how do we compute for R sub PB? The formula is now flashed on the screen. Seems complex, isn't it? To better understand this, I will provide a specific example found in Table 7.7, .7, pages 276 to 277 of the book Research Methods, Statistics and Applications by Catherine A. Adams and Eva K. Lawrence and compute the point by serial correlation coefficient between relationship status and the amount of time spent on Facebook in one day. Flash now is the sample data set provided in Table 7.7. .7. In computing the R sub PB, the dichotomous variable is coded as a pair of scores such as 1 and 2 or 0 and 1. In this example, in a relationship is coded as 1 and not in a relationship is coded as 2. The sample is divided into two groups based on whether x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 2 on the dichotomous variable so that we can easily get the following values. m sub p, which is the mean or simply average on the interval or ratio variable for the group coded as 1, m sub q, or the mean on the interval or ratio variable on the group coded as 2, p, which is the proportion of samples with the dichotomous variable of 1 over the total number of samples, or in this example, 8 divided by 20, and q, which may be computed by dividing 12 over 20, in this example, or simply 1 minus p. Next, we compute the population standard deviation for the total sample on the y variable following these steps. First, we subtract the mean of y from each of the y values and raise it to the second power. Second, get the summation of all the squared values and divide it by the total number of samples. And lastly, get the square root of the result of the previous step and now we have the standard deviation. In this example, the standard deviation is 1.2446. Now that we have all the values needed, we go back to the formula of R sub PB. Plot all the previously computed values and compute the R sub PB using the formula. You may notice that the sign on the R sub PB is dependent on the order we assigned our dichotomous variable. 
Since this was arbitrary, the sign is irrelevant. Therefore, we use the absolute value of the R sub PB, which is 0 0.38, and it shows a low to moderate positive relationship between in the relationship and the time spent on Facebook for one day. Well, our group has introduced the step-by-step -step computation of the Pearson's R and the R sub PB, it is good to note that in actual researches, we compute for such correlations using statistical analysis softwares to save time and effort, and so that we can focus more on interpreting the results of our correlations. The next presenter will discuss how we can interpret the results of our computed correlation coefficients. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Mitch Dinglas and as reporter for today, we will discuss the interpretation of assessing correlation between different variables. First, we will discuss the Pearson's R computation. In this test, we will have verbal ability and willingness to cheat of the students as our variables. The computation shows that the verbal ability has significant negative relationship with willingness to cheat of the students as R is equal to negative 0.66. This suggests that the higher verbal ability of the students, the lower the chance that they cheat. And as verbal ability increase, willingness to cheat will decrease. Thus, we can reject our null hypothesis and support our alternative hypothesis. But we also want to know whether the correlation is significantly different from what we've obtained by chance alone for the sample size. To do this, we use table of critical persons R value from Appendix C.5. To find the critical value, we look at the degrees of freedom of the left-hand column and read across the top of the chart of the criterion level and type as we consider. Although the relationship is statistically significant and strong, it doesn't mean that having verbal ability causes people to cheat or that everyone with low verbal ability will cheat. Let's now discuss the point by serial computation. For this test, we have relationship status and time on Facebook as our variables. Our results shows that we will accept our null hypothesis as there is low to moderate positive correlation between relationship status and time on using Facebook. Also, we did not find a significant correlation between the two variables that is present in our by serial computation test. Thank you for listening. I hope you understand my report and now let's move on to the next reporter. Good day, classmates. I am Daniel Sandil, and I am here to present to you the topic about regression. So, to start off for this topic, let us familiarize ourselves with the important terms. So, first is the regression regression equation. So, this equation describes the relationship between two variables and allows us to predict y from x, where x is a predictor variable and y is the criterion or predicted variable. This is also called y prime or y predicted. So, kung sa correlation, tinitingnan natin yung relationship ng darong variables sa regression, tinatry natin i-predict yung dependent variable gamit ang independent variable. So, for the linear regression naman, this is the process of describing a correlation with a line that best fits the data points. So, ano yung line of best fit? So, sabi sa libro, this refers to a line through a scatter plot of data points that best expresses the relationship between those points. So, next slide. So, dito, pinapresent natin yung regression line equation. So, this is y prime is equals to bx plus a, where b is the slope of the line and A is the y-intercept. So, para dun sa equation or the formula ng slope of line presented here, so it is B equals N multiplied by summation of X less summation of X and summation of Y divided by N multiplied by the summation of X squared less than the summation of X. For the y-intercept naman, we have A is equal to M sub Y less than B 
multiplied by mx. So, given ng example sa book, we have verbal scores, willingness to cheat, and yung r, person's r, which is equal to negative 0.66. So, let's solve for y prime. So, first, let us compute for the slope. So, given ka ng formula previously, and we have the table on the right, we plug in the values. So, we will get negative 0.318. We compute for the y-intercept. So, first, let us get the mean for the verbal and the cheat. So, for m verbal, we have the summation of x divided by n. Plug in the values, we will get 65.35. And for m cheat, we have the summation of y divided by n. We will get 32.5. So, now, let's solve for the y-intercept. So, it's m cheat minus b multiplied by m verbal. Plug in the values, we will get a is equals to 52.4. We now compute for the y prime. Take note na i-retain natin yung sign whether it's positive or negative. So kung sa b, we retain it as negative. It's negative 0.318. And kung sa a, positive siya, it's 52.94. So now we have this regression equation which is equal to negative 0.318x plus 52.94. So, given ulit tayo ng another example, meron siyang x equals to 42 and then x is equals to 85. We use the regression equation and then plug in the values. For x is equals to 42, yung y prime niya is 39.58. And for x is equal to 85, yung y prime niya is equals to 25.91. So, next is we plot the two beta points, the 49.49 and 39.58. And the other one is the 85 and 25.91. For the points, for the data points presented in yellow, you will notice that the y is slightly lower than the y prime. The difference is 1.38. While for the red, the y is higher than the y prime. So their difference is 0 .0, 4.09. So what does this mean? It's because, and as, it, as, it, as it was discussed earlier, that we don't have a perfect relationship. There is an error in the prediction. So, we know that when we use regression equation to predict y scores using x values within the range of our sample, that our y prime will differ somewhat to a lot from the actual y scores for a particular x. So, how do we compute average error in our predictions? We have this standard of error of estimate, which is S y prime. So, this is the standard deviation of predicted y or y prime and the formula is shown here below. So, we can compute for the sy but take note pala, ang, S, ang formula na to is may squared. So, what we, which, what we should do sa dulo is e square root natin siya. So, plug in the values, we will get sy prime is equal to 7.58. So, remember that the stronger our correlation, yung R, the smaller our SY prime is. This is because we are able to more accurately predict Y and the smaller the difference between each of the actual and the predicted Y values. We have the coefficient of determination, which is R squared. So, ito naman yung proportion of variability accounted for knowing, for by knowing the relationship correlation between two variables. So, the formula is presented right here, where 1 is the total variability and SY, SY prime square is the average difference between the actual, actual and predicted Y values squared, while the SY square is the variance of the actual values. So remember, the coefficient determination is the squared of correlation, R, thus ranging from 0 to 1. So if R square is equal to 0, the dependent variable cannot be predicted from the independent variable. And if it R and if R square is equal to 1, the dependent variable can be predicted from the independent variable without any error. So perfect siya. If R squared is between 0 to 1, that means that the dependent variable can be predictable. We move to multiple multiple linear regression R. So this is a statistical technique that computes both the individual and combined contribution of of two or more variables to the prediction of another variable. So, kung dun sa linear equation, 
one dependent and one independent. Dito sa multiple linear, linear regression, meron tayong two or more independent variables. So, by looking at the given equation, yung R natin as the predicted or dependent variable, tapos, and yung iba, yung excess are the predictor variables. So, ito nga, R is equal to A plus B1, X1, plus B2, X2, and so on and so on. Doon sa linear regression, isang X at isang Y lang. So, kaya Y prime is equal to B, X plus A. There. We have this mathematical softwares. Considering that this is a more uh, complicated analysis, the multiple regression, and for us to save time na din, we can opt in using statistical software such as SPSS, PSP, and StatsBlue, to name a few, to aid us in solving these problems. So, that's the end of my presentation, and now I turn you to Ms. Chelsea to discuss the next topic. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Engineer Eunice Chelsea Gallardo, and I will be discussing on how to use SPSS software to get Pearson's R, correlate, do regression analysis, and predict scores. As discussed in the previous chapters, there are multiple statistical packages available to compute statistics, and researchers almost always use one of these packages to analyze their data. The example that we're going to use now is the software SPSS. The overall data entry and output will be similar whatever software package you use. Well, for data entry, when computing Pearson's R, you will have pairs of scores for each participant in the sample. One score for each X variable and one score for each Y variable. You should consider each pair of X and Y as one data point, which are always paired in the data entry. If you entered X and Y values without pairing them up, you cannot evaluate the relationship between the two variables. Suppose you are interested in the relationship of body image and self-concept. Many years ago, there is a simple study by Rosen and Ross in 1968, examining the relationship between body image and self-concept con among undergraduates and found a strong relationship with Pearson R of 0.52. We wonder now, of course, that there is a different world that we're living in now, and of course, there's a different relationship of these two variables that exist today among college students. But for the sake of example, let us use this study. Uh, for example, the professor uses 20 students and interviewed them according to their body image and self-esteem. They complete a self-esteem scale and body image scale. The body image scale consists of 10 items. Scores can range from four to 40 with higher scores representing greater satisfaction with one's body. Self-esteem scale consists of 13 items. Score on this scale ranges from 13 to 52, with higher scores representing higher self-esteem, meaning that the second column that we see here is the body image scores, and this, the third column that we see here is the self-esteem score. We can already obtain a scatter plot by using Microsoft Excel, as you have already been doing, which you are all familiarized with. Seeing here in this correlation between body image and self-esteem, in our scatter plot, there's an obvious linear relationship and slope in our graph. But although we can see this obviously, we still have to back this up with a good equation and justification. So opening SPSS, we can already input the values of the data that we have in our table. In the first column, I have taken the liberty to name it body image and with the second column, name it self-esteem, indicated the respective values of each. So with that, I choose the analyze tab and find the correlate option. I choose the bivariate and here it will be asked, what are the valuables that you hold? So here I, I would input body image and self-esteem. With that, SPSS will already give us the correlations table. As for the correlations, here in the body image table, we see that this correlation between the sample is stronger with Pearson R that ranges 0 0.776, which is stronger than Rosen and Ross's study in 1968. Also, a p-value of 0 and an n of 20. 
knowing that our independent variable here or the predictor is our body image. And the dependent variable here or the predicted is the self-esteem. After obtaining the correlations table, it is also important that we have to see the regression analysis. So once again, let's choose analyze and then choose regression. Here, I have taken the liberty once again to choose linear. This time, it will be different because we have to indicate what is our dependent variable and our independent variable. Seeing to it that our dependent variable is the self-esteem, I will put it there and indicate also that the independent variable here in our study will be the body image. And with that, we can already analyze and obtain the regression analysis table that we need. Next, we go to the table of the regression analysis generated by the SPSS software. With the regression analysis table, this is the model summary that we have gathered. With our first table, the model summary, Pearson's R is 0 0.776 as indicated here in our previous slide of correlation. The coefficient of determination, which is R squared, is 0 0.6, and the standard error of the estimate is 6.78. In the ANOVA table, we can see and conclude the regression is at the same level as Pearson's R. Most importantly, here on the last table are our coefficients. We can see here that in the understandardized B, the constant will be our y-intercept, and the body image understandardized B will be our slope. We can already input these values to our regression equation. With our regression equation being a formula y prime is equals to bx plus a, we can input our values considering that y-intercept is 15.612, or we can put that here in a as indicated in our formulas and discussions before, and our slope, which is b, will be 0 0.757. This is the regression equation that we have derived with the help of SPSS. This means that self-esteem score increased 0 0.757 per unit that body image increased. With the line of best fit indicating that we have a positive slope or a positive relationship between the two variables. So let us discuss now the results and correlation of the regression. Here we can already conclude that self-image is positively related to self-esteem. The error is although fairly large given its range. Also, future research should explore the characteristics of students who fall at lower end of the body image and self-esteem scales in order to better understand these students. Due to the study only done in a small sample of students at a small college, future researchers should examine if the findings could be replicated on different conditions and, of course, a different environment. Our next sample size to see and use SPSS software would be a topic in the point by serial correlation as discussed previously. Well, here we have a small sample survey on college students between the relationship status and amount of time spent on Facebook. Here in our data table, one indicated here is in a relationship and two is not in a relationship. After indicating all the values that we have to input, let's go to the analyze menu, correlate, and then bivariate. We choose once again the variables here. We see here that we have to indicate our variables. So let us choose Joa status and ours on Facebook, and then click OK. SPSS will generate the correlations table that we can use. Indicated, thanks to the SPSS software, that our Pearson's R is 0 0.38, and the P, or significance, is 0 0.098. We have to conclude here that there is a low-moderate positive relationship between the two variables and the relationship is not significant. So, meaning, and in conclusion, there is no correlation between being in a relationship and spending time on Facebook. I'm not sure if you agree, but this is the study that we have done, although it is on a very small sample size. Thereby, we cannot achieve that much of a significance. And also, we cannot compute progression analysis because we do not meet the assumption of having interval or ratio variables. Well, I do hope that I help you familiarize yourself with the SPSS software. And this has helped you in analyzing and using the software 
for regression analysis and correlation. Thank you, everyone.